So as you can see, we have calculated now the true power, which we got at 0.238 watts, and we just finished calculating the reactive power at 7.48 watts. The last step for our power triangle is to calculate the apparent power. And if you recall, the apparent power is the total power of the circuit. So because it's the total power of the circuit, we need the total current of the circuit, which we're going to be using, but we're going to use the impedance of the circuit, which is the overall resistance in the circuit, to get the total power. Again, don't get confused by the fact that I used the letter Z. It's still the resistance, but because there's an inductor, we have to use the impedance for Z. So let's do that and get some values. We have the current again. The total current is 0.063 amps. Don't forget to square it. And you're going to multiply times the impedance. And this time we use the impedance. And make sure you don't use the inductive reactants. We're using the impedance. And it's 1885.90. All right. So let's get our handy dandy calculator and see what we get. We have 0.063 square times 1885.90, and I get 7.485 watts. This is the value of my apparent power, which can, I can now substitute into my triangle. So now I have all three values, the value for the apparent power, the value for the true power, and the value for the reactive power. One thing you will notice is like, oh, wait a minute, look, the reactive power is almost the same as my apparent power. Hmm, that's kind of weird, right? Well, the only reason it's kind of weird is because remember, these things do not add linearly. You're not doing 7.48 plus this. You add it using the Pythagorean theorem, which we're going to show you next how to check to see if your values are correct.